Hi and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Dr. Latrice Montgomery and the purpose of this channel is to discuss marijuana from a scientific perspective and a few other things. So make sure you stay tuned to the end of this video so that I can tell you about what I've been up to and some updates that you'll see on my channel. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. Also like and comment. Let's have a conversation. I'm always checking the comments and eager to hear from you. So let's go ahead and jump right into the purpose of this video. As you'll see from the thumbnail, the topic today is marijuana and autism. And I was specifically interested in this area because I've been seeing a lot lately over the past few weeks about a study that was recently released that found an association between marijuana and autism, particularly autism spectrum disorder. So I wanted to just talk to him about that study because while I've seen people talking about the study, I also saw that there were people who misinterpreted the findings. So I want to kind of reiterate that point because as you know, one of the things that I promote is research. And as a research psychologist, I'm very excited to see studies, particularly studies in the area of marijuana. But just as important as it is to do research and to kind of understand that research, you also need to understand how to interpret it and how to be able to share it appropriately with the public and to share it with policymakers and people who use it to actually make decisions related to health. So I'm going to break down the study and then kind of drive home some of those points that I just mentioned, as well as points that I've talked about in previous videos where I discussed marijuana research. So very briefly, in case you haven't seen it, there uh, was recently a study that was published that found an association between marijuana and the development of autism among children. And so I want to tell you a few details about that study, but also talk to you about some of the things to keep in mind when interpreting the findings. And this applies not only to this study, but to all the studies, whether they're conducted by myself or other researchers. It's important to make sure that you interpret it in light of its limitations. A little bit about the study. It's a retrospective study, which means that the authors went, went back in time. So they looked at birth registry data. So data from 2007 to 2012. So essentially what they did is they looked at 500,000 people in this registry, interested in how many of those women reported using marijuana while pregnant. And they were able to use that information to link it to another database, which had outcomes for their children. So, what kind of outcomes? Neurodevelopmental outcomes. And neuro just means brain. So there were a lot of conditions like autism, ADHD, um, intellectual disabilities, learning disorders. So they were looking to see, does the exposure to marijuana during pregnancy, does that impact whether or not a child will have any of these disorders or disabilities? And so, basically they're comparing Women who are pregnant, among women who are pregnant, they're comparing those who use marijuana during pregnancy and those who didn't and looking at the outcomes. So that's pretty much how the study was designed. And so what they found was that among women who reported using marijuana during pregnancy, they were more likely to have a child who developed autism. Now, it is important to note that the differences between those individuals who use marijuana and those who don't. So for example, among the women in this study, marijuana users were more likely to have psychiatric disorders and were, was also more likely to use other substances while pregnant, such as alcohol and prescription drugs. So therefore, it's unclear if the changes are due truly to the marijuana exposure or perhaps an interaction with marijuana and other drugs or other conditions. And so, in this study, they considered that and actually controlled for all of those issues and, and tried to look for those what are called confounding factors or other factors that might impact the relationship. And so, even when they did that, they still found an association. So, some people concluded that that means that, they're, that marijuana causes autism. So, I want to just make it very clear that that is not what the study found. Um, that the study was an association between the two and it was a it's also a, important to understand that what the study instead of saying that marijuana causes autism a more appropriate way of looking at the study is saying that it's great preliminary data to further examine the relationship between marijuana and autism 
So whenever you're interpreting studies um, such as that one and any other study that's out there, it's always important to consider a body of studies or a, a great number of studies rather than just looking at one and drawing conclusions. Because if you look at one study, it can be very dangerous to just draw conclusions because there is, as we've noted, there are many limitations with looking at retrospective data, although it can be a good source of information and can help to give us some preliminary information about additional studies should follow up on it, and particularly longitudinal prospective studies that where we can look at individuals who are using marijuana and looking to see if, if children go on to develop autism over time. So there's, again, some great information, some great preliminary data, but lots more, a longer way to go to draw really firm conclusions about this area. So I also hope that as you think about now all of the discussions around health, that you can remember that um, in those the discussions you're having about the best kinds of treatments and the best things to do is that you don't want to just draw conclusions off of one study, but you want to look at a body of work. It's important that you consider that full body so that way you can understand that there are strengths and limitations of all studies. And so you can talk about the strengths and limitations because what we do as researchers is we then take each study and we build off of it. And so if we see that one researcher has done designed a study in one way, we look to see what are the strengths, what are the limitations of that design. And then we we hope to improve upon that design and develop another study, but also realizing that that study is also going to have strengths and limitations. And so the cycle continues. But what you'll find is that over time, you'll have this larger body of research that you can then use to draw conclusions. And that becomes very important for not only everyday conversations that we have about these different findings, but it also becomes important for policymakers and individuals who are developing treatments and prevention interventions because it has tremendous implications for the work that we do and where money should be spent and where our efforts and our time should be spent as well. So really the purpose of this is just to bring awareness to some of these issues so that when we see these headlines that sometimes are striking and it's like, oh, wow, we can we'll have or equip with the tools that we need to be able to think very critically about the things that we're, seems like bombarded with every day, some type of news, especially as it relates to health. So if you have any thoughts or questions about any of this information, I would love to hear from you. Make sure you leave those you know, thoughts down in the comments. Any questions, any new videos that you want to see, please make sure you leave it down in the comments. Also, switching gears just a little bit, I told you I have some new things going on, so I wanted to share with you that I'm hoping to do more of a day in the life in on this channel as well. So I'm going to have different playlists, so you'll notice that There'll be some videos that focus on marijuana, which is, you know, what brought you here. And so I'm glad that you're here. But I'm also going to do some videos around just, you know, day in the life, um, working with students, being a research psychologist, writing grants, all kinds of stuff. So you can get a sense of what it is that I do. Because in addition to all of the marijuana questions that I often receive, I also receive tons of questions about it's like, what exactly do you do and what does a typical day look like for you? So I'm hoping to bring that content to you uh, soon and give you some just kind of raw footage of what I do every day. Um, kind of boring, but you know, it's just the hustle. So hopefully um, you'll be kind of inspired or excited about some of the work that I'm doing. So thank you so, so, so much for tuning in. I've missed you guys, but I am back. I'm excited to be back. So uh, make sure you engage, like, comment, subscribe. I want to hear from you. And I look forward to seeing you next time when we will discuss all things weed.